Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another G-Shock video. Today we are going to have a look at the first analog frogman by G-Shock. Let's dive right in. The watch comes in this nice Master of G box. Mine is a Japan domestic model, hence this packaging. For other regions, I believe it comes in a standard G-Shock tin can. Alright, let's see what we get on the inside. Here we have a smaller box. So this box houses the manual and uh, other documentations, the uh, warranty information over here. Let's put it aside. And this main box houses the G-Shock inside it. How cool is that? The GWF A1000 Frogman. When the first pictures of the swatch initially leaked online, honestly, I was a bit skeptical of it looks. It just didn't look that appealing at first. After all, this is a watch in the Frogman line of series and definitely the expectations were high. The analog Frogman comes in three variants. The GWF A1000-1A with the black straps, 1A2 with the blue straps and mine the 1A4 with the red straps. Now that it's here, let's have a closer look at it. On one side of the band, we have the Tafsola wording and the classic frogman strap design with the dual holes. On the other side, we have got the multi-band 6 and the keeper is uh, made of resin and the G-Shock word is embossed on top of it. It's a nice touch. The buckle is made of metal. On the inside, it says Casio Japan. Now let's have a closer look at the case back of this watch. Notice that there uh, aren't any screw back cover or any access to inside of this watch here because to access the battery and other internals of this watch you have to get in from the top of the watch there are six screws which are holding the top to the case of this particular watch let's see what do we get on the uh, case back here we can see the module within this watch is 5623, model number GWF-A1000, watch is made in Japan. Uh, we can see it says magnetic resistance, carbon monocoque, uh, and then 200 meters water resistance, and the new Frogman logo. Looks pretty cool and neat. Back to the front of the watch, we have the classic Frogman asymmetric design with four buttons and one screw down crown. The crown is pretty chunky and it's made of metal. It has got deep textures and uh, uh, for better grip. I can easily turn it even though I'm wearing a glove. The buttons on the left side of the watch are chromed out and easily accessible. The buttons on the right side are blacked out and they are slightly thinner. The watch face on this frogman is pretty busy with lots of smaller dials conveying different information. So let's go through some of the details of the dials. The main dial on the right side of the watch shows the day of the week, tide information, the different modes on this watch and summer time information. The lower left subdial shows the dual time or the port city that you have chosen. The tiny dial at the 4 o'clock position shows AM or PM for the dual time that has been selected. The upper left dial shows whether it's AM or PM for the home time. And finally, we have the date indicator at the lower right hand side. All the wordings around the bezel of this watch is engraved and has a premium finish. 
the glass on this watch is sapphire crystal and it is treated with non-reflective coating now let's look at some of the uh, modes on this watch so when i press this button over here it's going to first go into the uh, tight graph mode so basically it switches the dual time to the port city that you have chosen and then it's going to show you the current tide which says it's high tide right now when i press further it's going to show the stopwatch and when i press this button on the uh, lower right hand side it's going to start the stopwatch so the seconds hand will move and the minutes and hours uh, on the lower sub dial will show how long the time has elapsed uh, since the stopwatch has started so to stop the stopwatch you can just press the same button and then to reset it you just press the button over here okay let's move on to the next one which is the timer feature so right now the timer has been set for uh, like five minutes so i can actually select it uh, differently so i just do a single pull and then i can move it the lower smaller sub dial will actually move so now i've set it approximately 10 minutes and then when i now when i set it and i start now the hands uh, pretty much will move on the opposite direction to show that the timer has begun and there will be a, a beep at the end of it okay so let's move on to the next one which is the alarm as soon as i go into the alarm mode the second hand goes to this position says off which means currently the alarm is off of course i can turn it on by pressing this button and then uh, and the alarm has been set at approximately 11 59 uh, over here right and then back to the day of the time so you have it shows currently today as i'm filming this on a sunday 12th of july if i press this particular button over here it will do a non-obstructive movement of the hands depending on the location of the hour and the minute the hands meet either at 11 o'clock position just like how it done over here or they meet at the five o'clock position so let's say the uh, time was slightly different and if i set it over now now when i press the non-obstructive movement it is going to move to towards the five o'clock position pretty clever feature the watch has got a super illuminator high brightness led light which is really bright and uh, it pretty much illuminates the entire watch face pretty evenly looks pretty amazing in my opinion and as for the loom on this watch well check it out yourself it's pretty amazing The watch connects via Bluetooth to your smartphone and the companion app is G-Shock connected. You can set the tide point in the app, view your dive log, adjust your dual time settings and set your alarm and timer within the app as well. Some other notable features of this watch, it has got three dual coil motors, a system that both speeds up the display and enables unique hand movements in which the uh, pace slows down or speeds up as appropriate you can also quickly swap the time from the dual the dual time that we have here from home time to dual time and back and forth pretty easily by pressing the uh, light button for three seconds g-shock also says the band is made of fluoro elastomer material which will be more durable in the long run the wash strap is dirt resistant and repels water. You realize there is no indicator of battery level on this watch. You will know the battery is low when the second's hand ticks or jumps at two second interval instead of one second, which normally it does. There are three levels of power saving mode on this watch. Level one, 
connection to the phone via Bluetooth is disabled. Level 2, basic timekeeping functions are only operational. Level 3, only the day indicator is operational. The battery life is approximately 3 months to 5 months depending on the usage of the lights and the Bluetooth connection. But since this watch has tough solar capabilities, as long as it gets enough light of any source, you should be fine. A quick comparison of this watch beside a GWFD1000 Frogman. This is how they look like side by side. Almost similar in terms of size, uh, just that the analog Frogman is slightly thicker. You can see over here. Apart from that, uh, the straps, strap length looks like the GWFD has got a slightly longer strap length compared with the GWFA. A quick comparison of this watch uh, side by side. Uh, we can see the GWFA loses quite a lot of features compared to the GWFD. So it's missing moon face, compass, temperature sensor, depth sensor, and also the, uh, the straps which has got carbon fiber insert for the GWFD. For the GWFA, it has got Bluetooth uh, to connect to your smartphone. And the straps are much tougher compared to the uh, GWFD. One other thing that I've actually seen is the debacle on both these watches are slightly different. The GWFD has got a more smoothed out and uh, cleaner looking buckle. Uh, feels a lot more premium compared to the GWFA. The edges are very sharp on the buckle. The watch costs 800 US dollars or 750 euros and it is already available in most of the region for purchase. As a watch, this analog frogman looks pretty good, wears well, feels premium. It's something that I'll wear on day-to-day -day basis if I want to. If you have been using your Frogman as a tool for your dives, then you are losing quite a lot of relevant features from the GWFD model. So it really comes down to whether you really like the look and the design and also some of the basic features that this watch provides. That's pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys today. Thank you so much for your support and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Till next time, see ya!